Welcome to this very special 30th anniversary edition of the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School Leadership Speaker Series, live from the Overlaw 1888 Hotel here in Sydney. My name is Dr. Cindy Lee. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, particularly the Gadigal people of the Ayora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of this place we now call Sydney. I would also like to pay my respects to elders, past and present. Today's panelists are all graduates from the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School and are next generation leaders. Our theme for today's discussion will explore how leadership in hotels is evolving and how our recent graduates are reshaping the leadership landscape. Ms. Laura Wiersma is currently the marketing manager for the Four Seasons Hotel Sydney, who graduated from the school's Bachelor of Business International Hotel and Resort Management Program in 2018. Mr. Scott Baer is the front office manager at the Sofitel Sydney Darling Harbour. Scott graduated from the school's Bachelor of Business, International Hotel and Resort Management Program in 2017. Finally, Ms. Doreen Encarnacion is the Account Manager for Liven. Doreen graduated from the school's Masters of International Hotel Management Program in 2019. Our host today is Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School's very own Associate Dean, Associate Professor Simon Paulson. A warm welcome to everyone. Thank you, Cindy, and welcome to this very special edition of the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School's Leadership Speaker Series. We're coming to you live from the Ovalo 1888 Hotel here in Sydney. And it's absolutely perfect that we're filming from the Ovalo Hotel because the Ovalo Group is doing some incredible work around culture and leadership. So very fitting that today's conversation should be all about next generation leadership. Panel, welcome, or I should actually say, welcome back. Doreen, Laura, Scott, it's wonderful to have you back at the, hot at the hotel school. Even though we're not actually at the hotel school, we're in this fabulous environment of the 1888 hotel talking about all things next generation leadership. And I really want to put today's conversation into perspective. And this takes me back a couple of years ago to a conversation I had with a previous alumni, um, Ben Lankin, who's now with Opal Age Care. And Ben and I were talking about leadership for hotels and we both agreed that leadership today in hotels, there are some very unique qualities about those who lead in hotels. But we also agreed the leadership landscape in hotels is changing, especially given that we have a lot more millennials and Gen Y employees in hotels that simply require a different type of leadership. So with all of you as our next generation leadership uh, leaders and doing some incredible things once you've, as you've graduated from the school, I'm really interested to explore you know, your thoughts on next generation leadership, but also some of the things that you've been doing since, since graduating. So perhaps a, a really good place to start is for you to tell us a little bit about your journey since graduating. And in terms of leadership traits, what have you found that has been very useful for your careers and moving into the positions that you were really chasing. So, Doreen, I'm looking at you and that's the perfect place to start. So. Beautiful. Um, hi, my name's Doreen. Um, I used to work at Pier 1 Sydney Harbour. I was there since I started, um, since I moved here in Australia. I started as a guest service agent and after I graduated, I moved into the management role. Um, I graduated in 2019, so this is right before COVID hit. <laughs> so it was very, very um, challenging moving into a management role and suddenly have to shut down and going through COVID. Um, I think it's all about adaptability, you know, being very open-minded and trying and, you know, trying a lot of new things on how to work around the operations role. Um, 
Moving forward, I have moved on from the hotel industry and now to the food and beverage section. Um, more on like a startup company called Liven. I'm now the account manager there, opening up a whole new department, account management department. So again, everything's all new to me. So it's all about adaptability. And I think this is really important in being this in the leadership role. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and Laura, you left us in, in 218. And tell us about the journey. Definitely. So I finished um, at school in 2018 and I went over to the Four Seasons, uh, started as a marketing coordinator. Uh, there I was lucky to be selected as part of the manager and training program with Four Seasons, um, which is, was absolutely fabulous and kind of saw myself throughout a year and a half go through various different sections and departments in the hotel. Um, from that program I went into an event manager role and most recently um, moving in, having moved into a marketing manager role. So it's been very fun, a lot of changes over the past three years, and I would definitely agree with Doreen, <laughs> where you have to be adaptable. And I think just in our industry as a whole, that's definitely my number mm -hmm. one pointer, is adaptability mm -hmm. and learning new things and being able to change into different roles. It sounds like adaptability is going to be a very important yeah. word over the next, <laughs> over the next <laughs> hour. <laughs> and, and Scott, you left us in, in 217, so mm. tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, I feel like I'm the oldest <laughs> alumni here and I graduated four years ago. But uh, yeah, as soon as I graduated, just like Laura, uh, I went into the corporate leadership mm. trainee program at Park Height, uh, which was a 12 month program of every uh, uh, department across the hotel where I featured more in the rooms division. Um, and from there, moved my way to assistant guest service manager mm. at, the, at the hotel. Uh, and then recently, about three months ago, I moved over to Sofitel to become the front office manager which has been an experience in itself. Uh, 155 rooms to 590 rooms. Uh, it's a bit of a beast of a property and quite new. So it sets a standard for mm. hotels across Sydney with its uh, innovation of how it runs. And um, I think the biggest thing that I think we noticed last year, and uh, Laura especially could probably agree, that what we learned during our CLT training program prepared us for COVID. Uh, whereas 2020, we were I know I was painting guest rooms and I was cleaning the driveway and fixing air conditioning and um, those type of things that you just got to pick up and luckily we were prepared for that um, in the roles of the, the CLT program but yeah it's the adaptability like you said is, is probably the main feature. Uh, I, think, I think what's really impressive is 219, 218, 217, you were all in leadership roles already and doing extraordinary things you know the school is very proud of all of you. So why do you think you have been so effective uh, moving you know, up the ladder into those positions so soon after graduation? Laura, let's start with you. So there's no sure, order yeah, to this. No, definitely. Um, that's a very good point. I think a big part of it came down to obviously being at Blue Mountains and having the practical aspect of it, and as well as gaining your experience through industry placements throughout. Yeah. I think that was really um, set kind of um, us students at the forefront upon graduation, having that um, practical experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really gives yeah, you that definitely. advantage. Yeah, if you haven't experienced a hotel before you step into one it's kind of like a smack in the face mm, how, did, how does this place run what am I supposed to be doing what am I supposed mm. to be looking for whereas the practical side of our, our training was very you know this is the direction that you've got to go in and then we steer the ship now after graduation on how we mm. I guess develop our own personal profile mm -hmm. uh, and set that standard when we get into the industry I mean you can only be taught so much whilst you're at uni and mm. um, it's then taking the, the initiative to, to step up. Yeah. Now, I think what we're, we're really interested in hearing about is your current role. So you've already told us a little bit about what you're doing now, but what we'd be really interested to learn more about is, let's say, a day in the life. So tell us a little bit more about your, your current roles, but take us through, you know, a typical day for you. And, and Scott, let's start with yourself. Yep. Because I know that is, you're right, it's a <laughs> fabulous property to Sofitel, but it's mm. a very big property. So. Yeah, it's a bit of a, mm. bit of a beast. But, um, so my tra day traditionally starts uh, getting to work about 8, 8.30. Um, and with our, my role as front office manager, very mm. operations focused. Mm. So stepping out into the lobby, seeing how the lobby's going in the morning, usually checkouts are coming through. Um, 
chatting to the team, seeing how uh, the vibe is and the morale is. Uh, it's a busy day. They're probably, they're probably not in the greatest mood when they start. So just checking in, um, getting the rundown, and we go to a morning briefing with all the head of departments at 9.30, and that's where we kind of sit down and uh, actually we used to go through operations, see what was on for the day, uh, but now Sofitel's taken the approach of we need to be hitting our pillars of guest obsession. Mm. What's the target? What's the plan for the day of how we're going to do that? So are we going to focus on our loyalty guests and making sure that they're feeling truly cared for or are we going to focus on the revenue side of things and how we're boosting our ADR and moving forward as a business? So uh, those discussions are quite informative and then it's relaying that information to the team. I think uh, what I've learned in the role so far is you've got to be transparent open communication so everyone's on board. Okay. If, if you don't transfer the information across to the team, mm. people are going at different ways to get to the end result, mm. but you've got to get everyone on the same page. So then throughout the day, it's uh, answering plenty of emails, uh, <laughs> y y your typical guest complaints that come yes. through. And, yeah. and I guess for a lot of people, complaints are a bit of a burden, but uh, the way we've got to see it is it's an opportunity to, you know, resolve an issue and then and create an experience for a guest that they weren't expecting you know when people complain it's here's something for free or let's let's fix that but um, it's more so welcoming them back getting them back in the hotel to show them what you truly can deliver <clears throat> um, so then for the rest of the day it's operations it's uh, meeting with different people about new ideas and uh, implementations that we're going to do across the hotel um, and then making sure that we're staying on top of the guest operations and the guest focus because at the end of the day that's the goal of our, our role. Um, so yeah, a few interviews here and there, especially at the moment with the uh, big turnover of staff and the industry being where it is, but yeah, it's, uh, every day is different, which is the exciting part. You don't know what you're going to walk into um, and it's your decision on how you leave it at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and Dorian, your day is probably going to look a little bit different because you're, you're sort of still in hospitality, but a different sort of side different of hospitality. Side. So, so take us through a day in the life of Dorian. <laughs> it's fairly new to me as well. Like I said, I just started. This is my fourth week in this company. So mostly about like creating that relationship and maintaining that relationship with restaurant owners. Mm. So no more about mm. the customers. It's more about restaurant owners helping them build up their brand as well with their restaurant brands and even opening up new restaurants through our platform. So a lot of phone calls in the morning before lunchtime because we, can't, we don't want to disturb their trade. Um, and also a lot of emails as well coming through. I'm just learning a lot about this role just now. Never done an account management ever. So <laughs> I've always been front office, front office. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting. I'm still learning, yeah. So before we go to Laura, I, I have to ask you, you've been in this role for four weeks. Mm. So why the change? So why did you decide to go from one good career into, into this role? So I think it's just the change of environment. Mm. You know, I want, to, I want to have a change of momentum, you know, have that motivation with me. And because this is a new department yeah. in, this, um, in this startup company, I'm basically building my own department here, so it's a lot of like new things that I'm learning as a leadership as well, as a leader. Um, it's trying to choose the right people in your team, trying to um, teach them, guide them as well. Um, yeah. And so it I sounds like you can really put your own imprint, imprint yeah. on, on sort of the leadership and, and the culture of, of the organisation and what you're yeah. trying to achieve. Exactly. Fabulous. <laughs> and, and Laura, Four Seasons, Day in the life. Take us Day in the life. So um, <laughs> similar timing, I start around 8.30 in the morning. Um, all things marketing. So we dive in and it's so fast paced and you're just kind of running with it. So um, my role really looks at uh, the social media for the food and beverage outlets as well as the hotel. Um, all the maintenance and the maintaining of the websites. Uh, we have media guests, uh, influencers, we have photo shoots for any kind of new campaigns, collateral. Um, so it's kind of getting uh, a bit of experience in a very diverse area of marketing. And I think learning this new role has been uh, very exciting because it's something I think that is not, it's a little bit overlooked in the hotel world, I think, at the moment. And there's so much more uh, experience and areas that you can take with it. Mm. Sounds. Uh, uh all of you, it sounds absolutely fabulous and it seems you're all enjoying, very much enjoying your, your current roles. Mm. Definitely. If you've just joined us, you've joined the Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School's Leadership Speaker Series, this time live from the Ovalo 1888 Hotel 
here in Darling Harbour, Sydney. We're talking to our um, recent alumni about all things next generation leadership. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat box on YouTube or Facebook. And towards the end of today's discussion, we'll have time to ask our panelists some of your questions. So panel, before we move on to next generation leadership, there's one very important question I do have to ask you. And of course that is around COVID. And I know we've touched on that um, a little bit earlier, but as you know, there has been so much discussion about industry recovery, where we're going and so on. But as rising leaders within the industry, what are your thoughts on industry recovery? And, and Laura, I'm looking at you, so yeah. let, let's start with yourself. <laughs> sure. I think it's actually um, quite funny because you're getting so many people's different opinions on how you think the industry is going to bounce back. And obviously, everyone's trying to analyze it and to see how it's going to come back, when it's going to come back. But I think when it does come back, it's going to come in full force and double the capacity. Because as soon as you have limited someone to just a Zoom platform and you can only have those meetings online, and because we've had that restriction of travel, I think mm. when it opens, everyone's just going to go gangbusters <laughs> and it's just going to be getting on that plane, getting overseas. And I think, yeah, it's, I think it's going to come in full force and we're not going to know what to do. Mm. Well, that, that's, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit more because you've said something very interesting. Of course, you're right. There is, there's going to be so much latent demand there mm -hmm. um, for accommodation, for, you know, face-to-face -face events mm. and to, to really get back to normal when it comes to travel, accommodation, hospitality, tourism in general. But of course, the workforce has mm. been decimated and mm -hmm. here in Australia, um, we know um, our colleagues in industry, uh, you know, in some cases, desperate um, to, to recruit staff. Mm -hmm. There simply there just, just isn't enough staff. So, you know, you're talking about you know, demand substantially increasing once we get back to a sort of a new form of normality. You know, we need to be able to obviously, you know, staff our properties, our hotels, our hospitality businesses accordingly to cater for that demand. Absolutely. Uh, and I think those conversations probably need to, we need to start planning for that immediately. That's going to be mm. so important. Definitely. So, yeah. Doreen, what are your thoughts? Well, likewise, I believe it's going to boom soon, mm. hopefully. Um, I think we're already experiencing this with current situations on the weekend. It's like mm. 80 to 100 percent mm. occupancy. Weekdays is like 30 percent. Mm. You know, it's like, and you just need to learn how to staff around that. Again, about staffing, it's it affects the service mm. in general. Like in a whole on a Saturday, everyone's just gonna be busy, pumping, mm. running around, and may not even think about the service that they're delivering mm. because they just wanna go in and out, to, you know, mm. finish it. Whereas on a Saturday, I'm oh, sorry, on a, on a weekday, everyone's gonna be 30%, mm. yeah, it's all good. You know? mm. But you, we wanna make sure these, the service is consistent. You know, we want to make sure that our staff is trained into doing consistent service throughout the whole week, regardless if it's 30 or 100 percent. And I think, like you said, staffing is something that we really, really need to look mm -hmm. into when mm -hmm. business is back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly at the recent AHIS conference in, in Adelaide, which is Australia's probably foremost hospitality and hotels conference, this was one of the main themes of, of the conference. There was over 800 hoteliers there. And they're all talking about, you know, staffing related issues. How do we resolve this? How do we, you know, especially attract younger people back into the industry so we can get those staffing levels to where they need to be? Um, so you, you raise some, some very valid points. And, and Scott, what are your views on industry recovery? Yeah, I think the demand, like I said, is, is coming back already. Uh, the last couple mm. of weekends, we've seen a massive increase of, of occupancies across the mm. board. Mm. Um, and I think hotels, have got to make the decision if they want a revenue focus or if they want a, a reputation focus. Um, and I think what you know, Sofitel has done and, and other hotels that I've heard of in Sydney is they've restricted the capacities of what they can take in to ensure that they're still delivering that five-star quality service. So the demand's definitely there. Um, it's coming through and um, I think you know, we're looking at opening up 100% very, very soon and uh, the staffing has just kind of Hold that back because if you can't mm. clean all the rooms, then how are you going <laughs> to get the guests through the door? So um, I think one of the big things that we spoke about and, and have realised is the housekeeping mm. side of things. And 
um, with not having the staff that can clean the rooms, how can you sell the rooms if you can't turn them over? Mm -hmm. um, it's an expectation of a guest. If the, if, if the hotel is going to charge top dollar, you've got to mm -hmm. deliver top dollar. And if you can't, then you've got to pull back a bit. So um, the, the demand will come in. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that with New Zealand opening up and the mm -hmm. borders uh, in a state and how effect mm -hmm. it has when the borders mm -hmm. close. Um, but yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's not long before the hospitality is back up. Everyone wants to travel. Correct, Everyone wants yeah. to... Yeah, well, see the photos on Instagram. I want to get over <laughs> there. Uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's very encouraging to hear. And I suppose from the, the career aspect, you know, we've got a lot of especially you know, school leavers, not only here in Australia, but are, around the world, who are, who are now questioning um, whether they should consider a career in hospitality, given what's happened with COVID and the current state of the industry. Mm. What would be your advice to them? Scott? Don't, don't, don't stress. Don't stress. <laughs> don't stress at all. I mean, you know, it's such an amazing opportunity to be in tourism. And I think COVID is probably the only thing that's ever going to shut the industry down, and it did. So yeah. um, know and have faith that it's going mm. to come back. Um, mm. Knowing yourself, you know, as a person, mm. and you, you represent everyone, mm. will I want to travel again? And yes, you will. Will mm. I want to go to America? Will I want to go overseas? Yes, you will. So mm. for that, the industry has a bit of hope. The industry yes. is looking mm. forward to mm. a positive future. And um, I wouldn't sit there and, and doubt it for a second. Um, I'd only doubt yourself if it's the industry for you and mm. um, if you're passionate about delivering that customer service and mm. delivering that, that exceeded expectation, mm. then the industry's going to be there for you. Uh, you've just mm. got to give it a little bit of time now, um, but give it, a, give it a year or two and yeah. um, it's going to be the industry to be in for sure. Mm -hmm. Your advice to, to anybody who might be sort of now questioning whether they should? Uh, oh, question, just yeah. do it. Just you know, do it. take all the opportunity that you could get. Sounds like a Nike ad, yeah. just, just do <laughs> it. Just do it. <laughs> just take all the opportunity, like, yeah. like what he said. Mm. We're going to come back. Tourism is not going to end just mm. now, you know. It's going to mm. come back. You yourself want to travel. You yep. need a place to stay, so you need people yeah. there, right? So, yeah. You know, what I love is that there's no question, you, the three of you and, and your colleagues, you are the future of this industry. And just to hear that confidence that the industry will come back bigger and better than ever, and it's already showing signs mm. of coming back. Mm. Domestic travel, um, and again, last week I, I took a week off and travelled domestically, and it was so wonderful to see um, these little regional towns with so many domestic tourists come mm -hmm. in and experiencing um, you know regional product what Australia has to offer so certainly domestically we're coming back and as soon as we get these borders open mm. and internationally we'll, we'll come back too but just to hear your your passion and enthusiasm that yes and that confidence it will come back mm. and I think that's what anybody who is considering a career in, in hotel management or hospitality really needs to hear about mm. now so so thank you for sharing that with us and at, at this juncture I think it's a great point now to talk about next generation leadership. In other words, all of you. Mm. And when we started our discussion today, I touched on unique qualities for those who lead in hotels. Now, there's very little academic literature around hotel leadership and those who lead in hotels. But I'm convinced some of my colleagues are convinced there are some very unique traits for those who lead in hotels compared to, say, a bank manager or those who lead in another industry sector. You're doing this every day. You're our next generation of leaders. Do you believe there are unique qualities or traits to those who lead in hotels? And what are those unique qualities or traits? Yeah, I can jump in. Um, <laughs> I think my big thing that I notice is that when you compare hospitality industry leaders compared to other places, we are running 24-7. And I think that alone takes such a big um, character trait to have because when you may finish your shift one day at 6 p.m., but you're coming in the next day at 8 a.m., and you got to catch up, even though you're off work, you got to catch up on the past 18, like 16 hours of your shift. So it's kind of having that um, adjustability and a quick learning and being fast paced that we're all we're always a moving mm. machine mm. kind of yeah, clockwork definitely. happening yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah I think a lot of the core skills are across different industries mm. to be honest I, I think as a leader in the bank a leader in um, I don't know the hotel industry uh, a leader in any any type of business you've got those core skills mm. and it's the same across the board I mm -hmm. think it's just to the extent of what you need them to be and I think hospitality it's more of a focus on of course the, the people and the customer customer focus mm. like if someone comes into a, a a bank and asks for a loan you know 
a week later, the, the lender doesn't turn around and say, oh, how's the loan going? Are you okay? Like, how was the experience? <laughs> Whereas with the hotels, as a leader, you've got to be passionate about mm. how was your stay? Mm. Would you like to come back? What can we offer you? All these mm. type of things and follow up and making mm. sure that the, the customer or the mm. guest feels cared for and genuinely appreciated in what mm. they're doing. Mm. They're just providing a business and they're giving us money. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's like, what can we do for them? How can we make them feel important? And that, in turn, creates loyalty, creates a repeated customer and all those things. So, yeah, I think core skills are definitely across the board. Um, but, yeah, I agree with Laura as well. Fast paced. Yeah, got to keep up. Yeah, and, like, having that open-minded, like, you have to work for 12, 14 hours just in case, you know? Yeah. Um, even as a guest service manager, like, back at Pier 1, sometimes someone call in sick, you have to be like, you know what? Yeah, i got to work double shift but still maintain your emotion. Yep. You can't show mm -hmm. this to guests. I mm -hmm. think that's really important in hospitality as well, is that we get to, we learn how to contain our own emotions and like yeah. smile through yeah. and not let it affect anyone so else. So you learn a lot about yourselves also yeah, exactly. in, in these roles. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I suppose that then leads me to, um, to ask you, there's, and Scott, you mentioned this, you have your core leadership traits that are fairly common across all industries. But the uniqueness when it comes to hospitality or hotel management very much is about people and other people, which again, you might argue is a, is a core skill that's needed in that, especially retail, need another, mm. but it's mm. really, really understanding, knowing and working with other people. Mm. And I think, Doreen, you, you summed it up beautifully when you said, you know, you also learn about yourself. And to really learn about other people, it's important to learn about yourself also. Yeah. And that constant growth that happens there. So I've got a question now that um, some of your former lecturers, I'm not going to mention who, oh but they've asked me to actually ask you this question. And it's quite a long-winded question. They're academic, so of course it's going to be a long-winded <laughs> question. Um, but it's a very, very important question. Um, so, the study of next generation leadership within hotels is really gathering momentum. And it is, we've actually now got um, a PhD scholar who's investigating this area uh, and he's uncovering some, some fascinating things. Um, let me go on, particularly as younger leaders who are Gen Y millennials are moving into leadership roles. These leaders are bringing new perspectives on leadership into the industry, and we are also seeing younger employees with different leadership needs. So, can we please talk about hotel employees? What are their main needs from hotel leaders, and how are these needs different from previous generations? So, I think your former lecturers would like to know specifically around Gen Y and millennial employees in hotels. And let's talk about some of their needs and perhaps how their needs have differed from, say, my generation, Gen X, and mm. so on, um, in hotels. So these are the people that you, you work with every day. So, so what are your thoughts around their current needs and how might they be different from, say, myself and other sort of Gen Xs and baby boomers? I think... Mm. The examples, <laughs> there's an example of us, oh, the three of us on the couch. There's a desire and a need to, to develop, to, to uh, I guess, climb the ladder. Uh, there's, a, there's a desire to not sit still. Uh, I think what has been noticed in our generation especially is that the same, the repetitive is getting boring. It's getting, we're not challenging ourselves. We want to continuously be, be pushed. Um, and I think with our generation as employees, there needs to be a focus on development and truly caring for someone else's growth and learning. Mm. And um, I think what I am just trying to push with my team at the moment at Sofitel is, you know, you are a true reflection of your employees. Mm. So if you have your GSAs fighting for team leader mm. positions and your team leaders fighting for duty manager positions, it reflects really well on you because you're the one developing mm. these guys and pushing their skill set. Mm. Um, and there's an eagerness to learn and, mm -hmm. and be better each and every day. Um, that doesn't mean that you're going to be a manager within two years of leaving mm -hmm. uni and um, be a general manager before you're 25 kind of thing, but there's a desire and it's nurturing that talent instead of just allowing it to, whereas in regards to, you know, back in boomers and Gen X, 
quite happy to sit in a role for five to ten years mm -hmm. because they were learning the core skills and sitting there and really um, developing themselves yeah. in that role, uh, whereas they don't see the growth. So, yeah. so, Scott, give me some examples, obviously, in your current leadership role, as to how how you offer these growth and development opportunities to to folks that you lead. Yeah, so it's hotels the easiest industry to do it in because you know you've got six different departments across a hotel. You can mm. provide cross training. You can provide opportunities to deal with the complaint if you're a GSA and uh, who would normally refer to a duty manager or a front office manager. They would. Uh, it's given them the the ability um, to um, deal with it themselves, and mm. it's giving them the reassurance that you can make a mistake if the if the guest doesn't like how you've approached the situation. I'll sort it out, it's not life or death. So mm. um, giving them the full confidence that their job isn't at risk if they take a leap of faith mm -hmm. and, and deal with a complaint or want to offer an amenity or a form of compensation that you're not going to come down like a hammer and be like, why'd you give away a $500 room? Like mm. it's, it's knowing and, and entrusting them to step up and, and have that development opportunity because if you don't provide the opportunities, when they do step into the role, they're going to be a deer in headlights and not know how to deal with yep. in situations. So, yeah. so really development through empowerment. Correct. So yeah. learn by doing. Yeah. So. Mm. And what about yourself? Yeah, I think there's a big difference um, between the two. I think um, that older or an older generation, <laughs> I don't want to say older, um, I think is very... It's all right. <laughs> I, I won't take any offence. <laughs> I think they're very focused on that job security. And like Scott said, sitting in a role for five years. And I think, um, especially for the three of us, I think it's very evident that we're hungry. We're, we're ready for that growth, that empowerment. Mm. Um, always looking for what's next and, and just really trying um, for the, like being collaborative and having that teamwork and appreciation and I think that's really what gives me energy and I think likewise yeah. to the both of you um, yeah. and I think that's where a big difference of that falls between. Mm -hmm. Doreen, similar for you? Or? Similar for yeah. me, yeah. I think where like I would say during COVID um, when the leadership was like, you know what, we got to start thinking together. That's when my motivation, yeah. I, I fired up. I'm like, Correct. let's go, yeah. let's do this. You know, and I think it's the same for everyone else, like regardless if it's COVID or not, it's that giving that empowerment to your team, mm. yeah. um, to the GSA, as long as you give them and trust mm. them, they'll feel like, yep, okay, I can do this. I can be a leader too. Mm. Yeah. And it's all about the belief in the team. Yeah. And especially in our industry, there are always going to be mistakes. Yeah. There's yeah. not a time, no matter how much training, team building, whatever mm -hmm. practice, there's always going to be mistakes. You're going to have a guest be upset or a complaint or what have you, and it's being adaptable in yeah. learning how to deal with that situation. Yeah. I, I would, if, if we could go back 20 years from when I was in industry, I would love to come and work for you. <laughs> <laughs> it right. was, it was very, it was a very different scene. Uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, where it was, I feel like, a lot more sort of autocratic in how hotels operated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you learnt by essentially getting into trouble for making a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, but it really, from what you're sharing with us today, that is very much sort of non-existent. Um, it's a very different attitude to learning and development and really growing careers. Um, in hotels. I'm going to throw a curly one at you. As you probably know, Torrens University is all about love what you do and we're very passionate about employability and careers. You've told us about your jobs, where we've spoken a little bit about a day in the life, you've told us about some of the work you do with your, um, with your employees, with folks that report to you. Why do you love your roles? I guess for me right now, it's building that relationship, getting to yeah. know the people. I started with ho in hotels because I never got a chance to travel. Mm -hmm. And being in front office, you get to meet a lot of people from different countries. And this is my way to learn their culture, how they are, and the same with the team, especially in Australia, it's so diverse. Like you have a team, like you have your own UN in your team. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think with that, it just gives me motivation to keep, like, to keep working with, with such a diverse team, trying to give them that opportunity to grow. Mm. Like, yeah, mm. definitely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why do you love your job? I think it comes back to when I first started uh, in the industry. It was Hyatt's 
purpose. Uh, it was in improving the lives of the people that we touch every day. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what's carried through mm. my whole career and what mm. I do and why I love what I do. Mm. It's not just guest focus, it's also mm. staff focus, providing mm. people the opportunity to, to grow and travel mm. and, and, and feel better about themselves as a being and also as, as their careers, but also, mm. again, the guest focus. And, you know, people, you get two types of guests. Mm. You get a guest that travels every week, is in hotels mm. all the time, this is their life, they just want to come home. And then you have a once in a five year trip where they've saved mm. up their life savings for an anniversary trip and mm. it's, you know, you, you put yourself in their position and uh, I, did I get my value out of it or did my expectations exceed? And mm. that's why we step into work every day. Why I step into work every day is that's mm. why I love what I do when a guest can leave the hotel and go, you know what, this was better than what I ever could have imagined. And um, having that, if it's once a week or once a month, it's, that keeps you going. Yeah. That's the motivation. Yeah, for sure. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Definitely. My role, I love my role. I actually <laughs> fell in, I, I generally do. I fell into marketing. It wasn't something I actually was, um, that I did not know too much about it throughout yeah. university. Like we had our one marketing course um, at Lura campus and then I didn't realize how fundamental marketing is for the hotel. Um, and I think every day is different and ensuring that you're kind of you're really you're holding and representing the brand because in in my specific role it's the outside image of what your guests are seeing so it's interesting having an impact on what your guests are seeing when it comes to collateral material or how you're marketing or having your social media so that's that's yeah very fun i think also marketing is going to play such an important role in industry recovery first of all around that confidence piece you know to encourage people it is safe to travel you know mm -hmm. go see australia go overseas yeah. have an experience but secondly around that all important buzzword in hospitality at the moment experience mm. correct you know the hotel experience itself Absolutely. which is it's, it's a wonderful word i love it mm. <laughs> and and yourself Doreen. well um i think for them it's a lot of like the hotel experience for mm. myself it's really about helping the restaurant owners mm. being at live in where we mm. are a platform for customers to be a payment to be loyal to restaurants mm. Mm. it's about when i when i call restaurant owners like why mm. did you start building a mm. restaurant mm. why did you start this brand i'm um, just hearing mm. their stories as yeah. well it's really yeah. motivating you're like i want to i want to like open up a store too <laughs> you know? yeah it's really it's really fun mm. yeah. And you've joined Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School's Leadership Speaker spe Series, a very special edition filmed live from the Ovalo 1888 Hotel here in Darling Harbour, Sydney. And if you have any questions for our panellists today, please do put them in the chat function on YouTube or Facebook and shortly we'll be able to ask some of your questions. So another very important question I have for you around next generation leadership is, why do you believe it's important for hotels to move younger people into leadership roles? I'll go for it. <laughs> I think no matter what, when you're implementing mm. new things at the hotel or having decisions, mm. having a broader age range group and having experience, knowledge, what's new, what's happening, no matter what, getting everyone's insight, you're going to come to a better solution or idea or I think it's just making sure you're covering all bases mm. because yeah. especially in hotels, you have such a wide range um, of age and it's really covering... Mm covering all areas. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Doreen? Yeah. I think um, with the younger generation, mm. um, COVID made it obvious, tech savvy, mm. you know, mm. with people yeah. like we have to start incorporating technology mm -hmm. in, in the operations, like trying to like less contacts. Like we didn't realize that we could do a registration card through an iPad instead of mm. using paper, you know, <laughs> things like this. Um, mm. and again, Adaptability. I feel mm. that in our generation, we're more adaptable, willing to learn, mm. um, eager to learn. Like um, this is very, very important when we start growing, especially with a fast-paced industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Scott. Yeah, I think Laura really nailed it. Yeah. Like to be honest, mm. it's it's having that mindset and a different perspective coming into mm. decision making. I think mm. the way that we're moving forward with the introduction of technology and the way that people want to you know, experience different things. We're not stuck in an old mindset. Mm. We want to be experiencing mm. new things, what's happening, what's, I guess, trending, 
on, yeah. on social media. <laughs> yeah. um, and people want to have different experiences than yeah. just checking into a hotel, checking mm. out and all the in-between. It's, mm. it's the experience of it all. Mm. And I think the younger generation can have an impact on that because they mm. know what's being spoken mm. about and where it's going. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Let's change the conversation slightly and talk a little bit about organisational culture because there is, as you remember from your school days, from your degrees, there is a close association between organisational culture and leadership and a healthy, vibrant culture in a hotel very much impacts guest experience and also your, if you like, strategic competitive advantage. So they all sort of go hand in hand. But in your opinion, as our next generation leaders, what do you believe are the essential ingredients for a healthy organisational culture in a hotel particularly given the changing demographics, and again, I'm referring to millennials and Gen Y, um, employees within hotels. Mm. Bit of a long-winded question, mm. but an important question. <laughs> yeah, I think um, the main ones for me is um, transparency, mm -hmm. um, open communication, empathy, mm. respect and creativity. Those are probably the five that come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got, you've got to be empathetic towards everyone, especially today yeah. where so many relevant mm. topics are being mm. spoken about. It's understanding mm. where people are coming from and mm. what their desires and needs are. Mm. You've got to be transparent as well, get everyone on the same page, everyone moving towards the same mm. end goal. If you know, you're know you hiding information from mm. people, how are they going to best cultivate mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. team to then move forward? So those mm. are the really main ingredients from my side. But Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, teamwork, and especially over this past year with COVID and so many employees being on stand down and then coming back into the yes. office. And yep. I think the impact of that alone, like you have some colleagues who stayed in the office or you've had yeah. some that were standing down and then bringing those two back together and yeah. getting them to be on the same team because obviously you have that um, interaction going on. And, and especially like if your team is on and if you have that um, team building and it, if your people are happy, then your guests are going to be happy. Mm. And I think that comes down for us at Four Seasons. It's the golden rule. Yeah. Um, so treat others yeah. how you would like to be treated. And I think that's really mm. a key fundamental of mm. how you're going to be able to have happy yeah. employees as well as guests. Mm. Mm. Dory? I think they've covered everything. <laughs> I was like, what else am I going to add? But I totally agree. I think it's just being on the same page. Mm. I think with mm. such a high um, turnover rate every day, you're going to be working with a lot of different people. Mm. Um, but get like putting that same message across the team yep. from different departments, mm. it's gonna affect the whole like customer experience. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure everyone's on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, reservation, sales, yeah. front office needs to know what we're actually selling or package that we're selling so mm -hmm. we could answer mm -hmm. guests correctly, mm -hmm. timely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think everything's yeah. already been said. And, and, and Laura, I think you, you just touched on this and what our audience would love to hear is perhaps some examples of, of what your brands, what your organisations have done around establishing a healthy organisational culture, particularly catering for uh, millennials and Gen Ys. So Laura, talk a little bit more around the Four Seasons sure. and the piece of work around and their organisational culture. Definitely. So um, I think everyone was kind of made well aware of it once COVID and because we've had um, great programs at the Four Seasons. So we would have Social Club, which would be an outing for all the employees, which was super important because it would be bringing different departments together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another key focus um, area that also makes for a great um, running organisation. Um, but now with having everyone back on board and bringing in new employees. We're focused on having our employee recognition back once a month, so it's really bringing everyone back together. Um, we now have a new lunch and learn program that's happening, so bringing in senior leaders and learning from their experiences and where they've gone from that. So I think they're really focused on bringing that community back to the employees. Mm. Mm. And again, that nice piece of training and development. You know, Absolutely. Get invo employees involved in as much training and development opportunities as possible, which leads to an engagement piece. So beautiful segue there. Mm. Sounds great. Mm. Doreen, over at your company, what, what are you doing around so organisational culture? Liven, um, so Liven with us, we have this thing called Lattice. We're using mm. this app called Lattice, yep. where it tracks your one-on-one -on -one with your direct manager. And also every Monday you get reminded or get randomly matched with another colleague of yours who you probably 
probably won't speak to like finance and operations or you know mm. not really close to but they'll be like hey have a 30 minute coffee break with this person so yeah. it's really really cool like with this um how they put this on board and also lunch and learn they do lunch and learn every two weeks like with a new startup company or or someone in the leadership as well yeah, so it's very interesting because it gets you engaged and get like engaged with other department. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scott? Yeah, I think Accor um, as an overall brand has really stepped up in regards to how they're looking after their talent uh, and, and cultivating that talent. I mean, uh, they've gone away from the traditional human resources term and, and called their department talent and culture, and I think that speaks uh, quite significantly in how they approach, mm. um, how we approach our, our ways to, to colleagues. So, you know, talent and culture standing for, you know, creating a culture in a team where people want to come to work and yeah. making sure that the talent there is, mm. is continuously learning and growing. And um, the wellness program that Sofitel has introduced uh, with a weekly um, activity. So we do like a 10 minute wellness um, yoga session and, and we're, every department's invited to the same room. So. Um, although it's not outstandingly obvious that we're all together, yeah. everyone meets in the same room and then it creates conversations and asks how your day is and checking in on each other. And this and is for a yoga session. Yeah, yeah, so it's quite fantastic. cool. So, yeah, so just, before, yeah, just before you go down and deal with probably five guest complaints, you get a bit of zen and, and you relax a bit. And then, now, now, be warned, Laura's down. listening, so we're probably going to hear about these yoga oh, yeah. sessions at yeah. four yeah. seasons <laughs> before yeah. long. So. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's great to yeah. see that it's not just a workplace anymore. You're not just doing your nine to five and coming in, ticking off, getting paid, see you later. It's it's an environment where you want to be there. And it's organizing after work drinks. It's it's organizing uh, team bonding sessions that, you know, you just wouldn't expect when you come to a, a, a hotel or a company, but um, it's good to see that the main focus, as much as it used to be the customer is always right, but now the main focus is shifting to how can we improve the lives of our, our colleagues, which then in turn, like Laura said, will have a positive impact on the guests, mm. so yeah. I also want to talk to you a little bit more around something that Scott Boys, who's mm. also one of our alumni, uh, and he sits on our industry advisory board, was talking to me about in relation to a core flattening its structure. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit more around what they're doing in that particular space and, and, and also why they're doing it? Yeah, so it speaks for itself, I guess, that the hierarchical structure of any organisation is, mm. is very, uh, ladder focused. Uh, you've got to work your way up to get to the top. And I guess the, the approach that a core is taking is, is to flatten that, to not make it seem as obvious as uh, you've got to report to this person, you've got to report to that mm. person. It's a, again the empowerment of allowing everyone to ha make decisions and make an impact mm. and a positive impact on the business. And um, in the hotel itself, we have a, used to have a head of department meeting, mm. which is now called a communications meeting, where the head of department can bring a member of staff to the meeting mm -hmm. to have an impact. Uh, we shouldn't be making decisions for a company without the company being there. So six people out of a hotel of 200 staff shouldn't be making the decision on behalf of everyone else. So it's that. getting people yeah, involved. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. mm. at the end of the day, me facing a guest explaining a policy mm. that I don't believe in because it was made by our general manager doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm. But if you're involved in the decision making process, if you're involved in uh, where the hotel's going, mm. then you truly believe and you're mm. behind the purpose, the, the, the customer's going to be wowed in a sense yeah. of how you deliver the yeah. news in itself. You know, you might remember your, your leadership classes in, mm. in your programs we, when we spoke about the importance of getting everybody on the bus. Mm. And this is such a yeah. great example of how you actually do that. Mm. You know, get them involved in decision making, make them feel a part of the hotel itself mm. through, hey, we want your advice, we want your opinions about important decisions we are making about the operation of this hotel. Yeah. And it's great that the hotel's actually doing mm. that. Well done, great mm. initiative. And I take it it's working though. Oh, it is, yeah. No, we definitely have seen a change. Like mm. from the three months I've been there, mm. uh, the culture within just my department alone mm. has really improved because, you know, someone who's come up with an upselling strategy or uh, spoken about how we should do the pool hours has seen the positive impact it's had on the guests. So mm. they take ownership of that improvement mm. and guest satisfaction, and it's mm. been recognised by our, our leadership team, which mm. is great. Yeah. Now, just be warned, there could be some invites for some guest lecturing coming. I, I, I've just got a feeling very soon you'll be receiving some invites for some, some guest lectures. Now, 
Doreen, you were speaking earlier on about you know learning a lot about yourself as part of your mm. overall leadership development. Mm. So what I really want to ask all of you, you know, as extremely successful next generation leaders, can you describe your leadership traits, style or approach, doesn't matter, mm. and why you believe this approach is beneficial for the people that you lead. So talk a little bit about your own leadership My style leadership and style. why you believe it works so well. I think, um, I would like to say I have like a democratic approach, you know, where I get people's opinion um, and then lead from there and making mm. sure that everyone is being heard. Like you said, that's mm. what, how we could be successful now in hotels and in the industry overall is that the younger generation, everyone actually, not just the younger generation, have a, have a say in what we do in the future. Mm -hmm. And this is what I have believed in since I learned about leadership, how I believed in myself. If you believe in yourself, you believe in your team. The whole team will work together and that's like, it's a synergize yeah. kind of teamwork, you know? And that's, I think that's the key. I think even now just speaking about it, yeah, okay, that's, that's the key. <laughs> And, and where your, your followers can actually see that confidence see, yeah, in yourself. Exactly. And, and like for me, even though I'm new in this industry where I'm at right now, like I'm new in this mm. role, I have to believe in it. Mm. You know, got to fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I just think that just having that positive vibe as well in the whole team, mm. it would really help a lot. Yeah. Fabulous. Laura? Mine would be um, definitely empowerment, giving, mm. we've touched base on this before, mm. um, but letting people make mistakes, not getting them in trouble for them, and that's just how you're going to grow from it. And I think with that, you need to ha give them flexibility. Um, I think also very strongly on a work-life balance, because mm. I think if, if, like, it's great to put in a 14-hour shift, but then you also need to be able to reward your employee for being able to do that, because that's where that acknowledgement and that thanks and giving back is going to get you so much further. Mm. And, and I think that's, in the long run, being empathetic to your employees as well. Um, and that's just, I think, where you're going to get the dream team mm -hmm. from. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, Laura. Scott? Yeah, I think it, I learnt my leadership qualities mm. from how I experienced my leaders in the past. Mm. Um, my first involvement in hotels, seeing how they acted and what I liked and didn't like about them. And you'll always learn from people above you and below you as well. Mm -hmm. And getting that constant feedback, I think one of the big things of my takeaway is don't ask someone to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. Mm. Um, and it's leading from the front. It's when there's 400 check-ins on a Saturday, getting behind the desk, even though you're not really yep. a GSA, mm. doing the check-ins and showing your team yep. that at the end of the day, everyone needs to get involved to make yep. the magic happen. Mm. Um, and then you build a bit of trust and confidence in your team and moving mm. forward to mm. know that you're always there to support them mm. and knowing that mm. no one is bigger than the organisation and no one's bigger than the weakest link as well. Mm. So um, all getting involved for the one purpose. Mm. Yeah. Correct. And mm. do you know, I think, we have just answered that question as to what are the unique qualities about a hotel leader and all of you through your own leadership development and experiences have now very, very well summarised, you know, what is it to be uniquely a hotel leader. So thank you for sharing that with us. That leads us now into a conversation around sustainability and leadership because I'm very interested to hear as again next generation leaders your views on this all important word of sustainability and leading with a higher purpose has over the over recent years become a very critical component of what we call effective leadership to be effective as a leader in other words believing and investing in something beyond profit itself. So, you know, leading with that higher purpose. Torrens, as you know, Torrens University demonstrates its leadership with a higher purpose through its commitment as a B Corp organisation. And that's something that, you know, we invest a, a lot of time and, and, um, and work around um, our B Corp activities. For Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School, um, it demonstrates its high purpose through its now 17 year relationship with Salabai Hotel School in, in Cambodia. Um, but as 
up and coming leaders. Now, what are your views concerning the hospitality industry and sustainability or leading with a higher purpose, something beyond just making money? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think it's evident now um, how important and I think how much it's been really made um, present and put in front of us that we need to be caring about our world and the sustainability and kids in elementary school growing up now, it's yeah. put as such a high importance that it's now kind of become a requirement almost and mm -hmm. it's evident that our future travellers and guests are sometimes in most cases picking hotels that do have a sustainability um, plan in place. So I think it's, it's something mm -hmm. that's not going to be more so, like I think it's going to be a requirement really that mm -hmm. hotels are going to need to be able to keep mm -hmm. that competitor mm -hmm. edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doreen? I think in terms of like sustainability, again, I'm, because I'm coming from a fintech um, company, I'm always thinking about how can we incorporate technology and replacing mm -hmm. like wastage of papers. Because mm -hmm. being in front office back then, I remember how many times we have to print, mm. <laughs> print invoices, print yes, the registration yeah. cards. Mm. But how could we change that mm. just from a single device now? You know, and I think this is one thing that in hotels we have to start changing, like or think about, mm. is really incorporating that tech savviness mm. in younger generations. Do you yeah. see your generation of leaders are the ones that are really going to make substantial change in this area? Mm. I believe so. I think you could also see that we're um, now biodegradable items are mm -hmm. going out there, mm. and they're made. They're they started from young younger generations. So you see their mindset is all about oh, saving the world, saving right. the, like being more plant-based. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we could start, yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott? Yeah, I think you've seen it in hotels mm -hmm. and it's, it's in the past, we haven't given the consumer or the guests mm -hmm. the choice. We've mm -hmm. taken it out of their hands and now uh, the simple thing of leave your card on the bed if you don't want your bed sheet changed or hang your towel up if you don't mm. want your towels changed. You know, those type of things are being implemented because of that focus. Mm. Um, at Sofitel, as of a week ago, mm. we installed a kiosk, a check-in kiosk, uh, where people can go and check in straight away mm. through the kiosk. They can sign a registration card so it cuts out mm. the, the paper element mm. uh, and straight to the room. So um, people are seeing and noticing how hotels are changing and mm. keeping up and adapting with the sustainability side of things. And I think we're even going one step further where we have you know, pre-checking, checking, check -in mm. online. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's essentially, you know, turn up at the hotel and mm -hmm. literally go straight to the room. You're checked in, you're there. Yeah, Marriott has so, a mobile mm, check-in. Mm, yeah. like, keys on the yeah, phone. Keys on yeah, phone and exactly. everything. Yeah, yeah. A fabulous advancement. Yeah. Now look, we could talk about all things leadership mm. for the next hour or so, and I would love to, but we really, and I can see some questions coming in from our viewers today, and I really want to ask you some, some questions from our, from our viewers. Mm. But before we do that, and we always finish our Leadership Speaker Series with this all important question. So watching today, as you well know, uh, as, as former students, are our future leaders. What three pieces of advice can you offer them about their leadership journey? And Laura, let's start with you. <laughs> Great. Um, I think resilience is something that's going to be my top one, that you just have to be able to take your mistakes as you go and you're going to learn from that. Um, the second would be to welcome opportunity. I fell into this current role. I would have never have pictured myself into in this position. And I think it's just opening um, and seeing where your career is going to go and, and, and not saying no all the time. And I think I'll leave it with being positive. <laughs> and I think we've seen that yellow. today. <laughs> you know, it, it's just a shame we don't have a live audience because if they could see the passion from the three of you, you know, it's such a genuine, real conversation that, that demonstrates, you know, again, how enthusiastic and passionate you actually are about what you're doing. Just, just absolutely love it. Doreen. I would be nearly the same, like open to <laughs> opportunities. Again, yeah. like stepping out into my from my comfort zone of front office operations throughout my past maybe, what, six years? Mm -hmm. And now becoming mm -hmm. an account manager at a startup company, yeah. mm -hmm. um, giving me so much opportunities out there to ex 
to know myself as well, mm. right? And also accepting failure. Mm -hmm. Like, that is number one thing. Like, being, even if you're so good at your job, always know that mm -hmm. there's always going to be failure along the way. And that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree with Laura. Mm -hmm. Laura. Um, the third one would be, how to say, um, I'd say just be confident. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, just be confident. Believe in yourself. Because that way, that's how you start growing. <laughs> A great okay, answer, and I think we've yeah. seen that in your answers today in our discussion. Uh, Scott? Uh, the three, uh, first, love what you do. Um, as soon as you stop loving what you do, you're in the wrong field. So mm. continuously wake up every day and, and know that you're doing the right thing. Yep. Um, because you're not going to fake passion, you're not going to fake wanting to be somewhere. You, you've truly got to believe it. Uh, I think the second one, would be continue to learn and grow um, every day. Mm. Go to work with a mindset of what am I going to do differently today? Mm. How am I going to develop myself? And what mm. new things can I learn whilst yeah. on the job? Uh, mm. About yourself or about your mm. career? Either way, there's got to be one tick item every day. Mm. Uh, and I think the last one is, you know, lead without a badge. Mm. Um, in that sense, for the, for the young graduates coming through now, it's, you know, you're not going to come out of uni and get a leadership role straight away. We've got to be realistic with ourselves and know that there's going to be a bit of work before mm. that, but you've got to lead without a badge, you've got to lead without mm. a management title because um, if you start from the beginning of leading and setting an example and picking up rubbish in the corridor when mm. it's someone else's job or mm. checking in a guest or having a conversation with a guest mm. whilst in the lobby when you're a housekeeping attendant, it's, mm. it's starting that mentality mm. which will take you through to a, a great career. But you know, what I, what I can see though, Scott, is that you know, all of you, um, and you've finished fairly recently, we're not mm. talking sort of graduating 10, 15, 20 years ago, we're talking you know, one, two, three years ago, mm. you're all in very good leadership positions. And, and what I see is that essentially you have taken everything that you have learned and you have applied it. And I can see that today in our conversation. And it's got to, it's, it's really helped to get you where you are today. And that, that is so clearly evident. So, so well done on that. Now, I have a question from a, a, a student and she's an undergraduate student who's just about to complete and she's um, studying online in, in Vietnam. And she's asked, it looks like you've all ended up in a variety of different roles in the industry. How do you think Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School helped shape you to be ready for any role? So you've been there, done that. She's now thinking, well, I'm about to graduate and I've now got to start to sort of think, how do I apply everything I've learnt? And she really wants to hear a little bit about, you know, your thoughts around this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I think it's just um, in Blue Mountains, well, at least when I was at Town Hall, I was with a group of very different um, people with different background. And to be able to know how to get along with them, speak to them, um, this is how you could also work with when you're in mm. hotels mm. or wherever you, you are, mm. is just really learning how to build that relationship with different kinds of people, yep. with mm. different backgrounds. And I think mm. Blue Mountain has really given me that platform to build that skill, mm. yeah. Mm. Beautiful, I, yeah, I would touch on that as well. I think because our university was so international, I think the learning started from day one of even just communicating and understanding different nationalities. And I think mm. that really was a key fundamental because you may have went, meant one thing and it was interpreted in a different way. Mm. So it was just learning how, I think it was the start of when we were first at Blue Mountains and mm. that carried through of group projects, presentations, mm. and you had to learn mm. how each person mm. worked. Our alumni often tell us that what they Apart from the three pillars, that is, is very important. But the, the three pillars is, is really part of what the school does day in, day out. But our alumni constantly tell us the applied nature of the program, so that immersive applied experience right the way through the program was very beneficial to help them, especially as a new graduate. Mm. Would, would you agree with that also as, as, as alumni too? Mm. Definitely. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
The next question that I have here comes from a master's student who is studying at our um, Wakefield campus in Adelaide because since you've graduated, we've actually taken our master's program to Adelaide. So we offer it not only in, in Melbourne at our Flinders Street campus, but now um, at Adelaide at our, our Wakefield campus, which is fabulous. And we've got, you know, Adelaide is such a, a great destination when it comes to food, beverage, mm. hospitality, hotels. And we've got such a great dynamic and team down there at the moment um, and this particular student would like to know about challenges and they ask what are some of the challenges you faced in your role as managers especially uh, with taking on such positions within four years after graduating so a little bit more about some of the challenges or obstacles you've encountered along your journeys yeah, I think for me, um, the clear and obvious challenge is the doubt. Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're young going into a management role and um, a guest comes out and says, I want to speak to the manager and out walks a 24-year-old <laughs> kid who probably is the age of their son uh, <coughs> to, deal with, to deal with the complaint. Um, and as well with, with colleagues, uh, people who have been at a hotel for 10 years and you walk in as a manager and they know how things are run. And um, I think that was... The, the challenge that I most face, but also an exciting mm. obstacle to overcome um, and, and allowing the team to believe that you're the right fit for the job, that you're mm. there, there for a reason, and also the guests that um, having the confidence, like you were saying, um, mm. to know that you have the experience mm. behind you, you have the, the knowledge and the, the skill set behind you to mm. deliver on the job, and that's why you're hired for it mm. in the first place. So never doubt yourself. Um, because, yeah, people are always going to doubt you. Um, yeah. It's just proving to yourself and to them that you're there for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Doreen, challenges or obstacles along your journey? Challenges and obstacles. It would be, I guess, um, being in a team where there are people who don't take feedback well. Mm. You know, and you really want to teach them, nurture them, but they don't take it well. I've learned this, like, when I was working with a fellow manager who I thought I would want to learn from mm. um, and didn't take that feedback well. So that taught me how you have to be really open-minded, um, mm. wanting to take feedback. That two-way communication, it can't just be one way, like accept feedbacks from your whole team, like mm. from a GSA, tell them how could I be a better manager for you. Mm. You know, that way they will really respect you, yeah. they'll really speak like openly to you and you can learn from that. Yeah. So really, uh, for you, it was learning more about giving and receiving yeah. constructive feedback, so, yes. which is important in hospitality because we can't learn and grow without that constructive feedback. And you know, as leaders, giving that constructive feedback also. So. Yeah. Definitely. I would definitely agree with Scott. I think um, the age was definitely um, a challenge and having your colleagues kind of view you and how are you going up these ranks so fast or how are you getting this promotion and what have you. And then you just have to put in the work and show that you are you were rewarded this promotion because you are the right person for it. You yeah. studied for it. You, you've, um, I guess, yeah, and having that education and knowledge behind you to support you. Um, and definitely. Mm. I kind of rambled on in that one. But, yeah. <laughs> now, the next question um, comes from our success coach team. And as you know, um, a lot of our, our current students, because of COVID, had to go home and are completing their studies from their, their home countries. And of course, um, our new students have had to start overseas and are waiting for borders to open to come to campus. And they're very enthusiastic and, and are looking forward to you know, jumping on the first plane as soon as those, those borders open. Uh, but the team, uh, the success coach team would like to know with the current border closure at the moment, um, the success coach team are encouraging students still overseas to um, seek roles back home um, with the brand of their choice um, while they wait for borders to open. Um, so what advice would you have for students who are in this situation, who are back home in their, their home countries and have, as you did, industry placement coming up, mm but are hesitant and, and want to wait until the borders open and come back to Australia to do industry placement. Um, again, when you know, um, brands that, that we all know um, operate in their home country. So, so what did the success coaches really want to know? What advice would you have for those particular students around doing or completing industry placement in their home countries? Do it. 
Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Don't wait. Why are you waiting? Yeah. There's no confirm like yeah. correct. There's no confirm date when the border is yeah. open. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're about to graduate and you still don't Correct. have that experience. Mm. So wherever you are, hotel is a hotel. Mm. Yes. Operations, operations, mm. no matter where you're in Vietnam, Philippines, like Australia, mm. the culture, it's all, it's all the same. Mm. You know, it's just the, how you want to work, how you want to learn, where mm. you want to be in, like mm. which department. That all comes from, yeah. you need that experience. Mm. Don't mm. wait to come here in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You have a housekeeping mm. front office department yeah. <laughs> in the hotel mm. back in your home place. So just take it. Just take every opportunity you could get mm. out there. Mm. Yeah. And if you cast your mind back to when you were students, did you find the way that the curriculum operated with doing some practical, then some classes, then some practical, then industry training, and then some more practical classes, that, that sort of... Um, balance that really helped understand the whole concept of hotel management? Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. I think that the practical side of mm. what we experience at Blue Mountains really helped us a lot in what mm. we really want, mm. which department we really want to join in. Mm. Yep. At least we have a little bit of everything, mm. like touch day food and beverage, yep. front office, housekeeping, marketing, you know yep. how the department works, mm. kind of. Um, and then after that, we get the industry placement where we could actually work six months in that department and really decide, is this, yes. is this really for me? Is mm -hmm. this department for me? If not, mm -hmm. well, you can go and, and learn other department as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Laura, your advice to students who might be sort of waiting to borders open before they do their industry placement? Absolutely go for it. I think mm. especially in this industry, um, it's pretty evident that you need to have experience behind mm. you in order to get that growth. And I think for all three of us here, we have had that experience throughout. Like I know Scott was at Park Hyatt for almost six years. You were at Pier 1 for that long as well. Mm. And I think getting that, you're finding out what department you want to be in. And then upon graduation, it's not as if you're just going out into the industry mm. and starting fresh, you've actually had almost a full year of industry mm. placement behind you and that's going to just get you yeah. that much further in growth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I can relate, I guess, to you guys in, in your home countries at home, studying online, not knowing where to go and, and where to do, but, you know, I, I guess I'm kind of the same mm. in a reverse role in Australia at the moment. You know, we want to be going overseas and working in different countries mm -hmm. and, and experiencing different cultures yeah. and um, the best thing that you can do right now is create a relationship with a brand. You know, brand loyalty is a huge thing. Um, yeah. You know, it allows you to travel myself. Mm. I did mm. a year and a half at Park Hyatt and they mm. sent me over to Hyatt Regency in London for my second placement because mm. you show the loyalty to that brand and they help you do yeah. that. So mm. it's create that brand loyalty, get that experience. So when the borders do open, you turn around and say, I want to go to New Zealand or I want to go yeah. to Japan to work. They're going to be like, okay, well, we've got three hotels over there. Uh, you were great to us during COVID. Let's get you over there and, and have an impact in that hotel. So mm. yeah. It's, yeah, don't, don't sit around twiddling your thumbs, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic advice. And we have one final question, uh, and this is a really interesting question. So imagine that, you know, you're Dr. Hill and we've got a TARDIS and we can go back in time and we can go back to the start of your studies. So go back to day one, mm. orientation <laughs> of your, your master's or your undergraduate program. What advice would you give to your younger self? It's <laughs> a tough one. Uh... And this comes from one of our Lura students um, who has actually just commenced with us. Mm. So. I think, I don't know, be involved in as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, whether it's SRC mm. or if it's volunteering to try something, an internship, um, I think because that's where you're really going to learn about yourself yeah. and what you want and what avenue you want to take in the hospitality industry. Mm. Advice to your younger self? I first guess, starting yeah, would, at, at Blue Mountains? <laughs> well, for me, I know I didn't really involve myself in the first few months with Blue Mountains, and I think I really regret that mm. because I didn't get to know, like, the success coach and then, like, my fellow classmates or even the whole team. But then on the second part of my journey with Blue Mountains, I started being close to the success coach, learned so much, created that network, and also being able, the opportunity to teach the front office um, team, 
just that, just giving that opportunity to, to the students as well. If you don't put yourself out there, mm. you're not going to be known. You're not going to learn. Mm -hmm. You're not going to learn about yourself yeah. or whoever you're going to meet. So I think it's just, yeah, I wish I could have put myself out there earlier. And, and Scott, advice to your younger self? Um, it's, it's like as silly as it says, and I agree with Laura and Doreen when they say involve yourself mm. in the university activities. I guess one of my biggest regrets whilst at university was on a Friday afternoon, I'd pick up my stuff, go down to Park Heights, Sydney, work for the weekend and come back and miss that social um, yeah. communicating, uh, networking time at university when it wasn't structured mm. classes. And, a Friday night at Half and Fiddle or Station Bar was, you know, <laughs> seemed like just a beer and a pizza, but um, you're talking to people, you're learning yes. about how people yeah. communicate, yeah. you're learning, you know, we had, I don't know how many countries, 60 odd countries represented in our intake, and you miss that opportunity if you're not there seeing them in their own personal light, because at the end of the day, that's a guest. Mm. That's what a guest is going to be like at a bar or at a restaurant or at a hotel checking in. So you learn from those experiences of seeing people in their natural habitat, in a sense, um, to then take it forward in your careers. So get involved, do the things and say yes to everything. Um, and yeah, make the most of it. It's two and a half years that is going to fly by. So, so fast. Yeah, it's fast. Quick, very quick. And of course, that leads me to the last question. And this question is from myself. And I've been dying to ask you this question. <laughs> What is your, and I think you hinted on it already, Scott, what is your fondest memory at Blue Mountains International Hotel Management School? <laughs> fondest or best memory? <laughs> I think the friendships that I've made, yeah. to be honest. Um, it's actually quite funny. One of my best friends is here today supporting me. But I actually met her day one at the airport. She's the very first person I met. We took the bus all the way up to Laura campus together. <sighs> Um, and we've kind of gone our separate ways throughout uni and placement and now we're back in Sydney together and yeah, so I think you will definitely make lifelong friendships as well. Scott and I are quite well, good friends as well that we've met at Blue Mountains and I think that will just help you network in, in your future and mm. having those connections. are amazing alumni mm. um, group that we have and I think that's just so important. I think with over 7,000 alumni, mm. you know, you've joined such a powerful network that's mm. not only going to help your careers but certainly help, you know, all of students, you know, all graduate careers. So, you're in fondest, fondest memory. My fondest. I think it's different from you guys because you guys are actually staying at the campus, mm -hmm. whereas yeah, yeah. for myself, I was in town hall, so it's like two hours yeah. of this, okay, let's leave. <laughs> but I think one of my favorite one would always be that barista area. Uh, that coffee... The coffee car. That yeah. coffee yeah. car. The coffee car. Because yes, that's yes. where you could actually yeah. talk to people, yeah. learn how to make coffees. I didn't know what the difference is between latte and cappuccino and flat white till I got to that coffee cart. <laughs> until, so, until you met Mr. Lawrence. Until I met Mr. Lawrence, the differences of the phone. Um, and that one and just, I think just the people that you meet in the campus, regardless yeah. whether you're in year one or year two, which yeah. term you are in, um, yeah. just creating that network. Again, we're, um, we're still connected on LinkedIn and yeah. sudden just knowing how you see how they grow, where they're going. Yeah, I think that's, good thing about Blue Mountains for me, yeah. Scott, fondest memory? Yeah, I can't, can't disagree with Laura, to be honest. Yeah. Like the, the relationships you build with uh, fellow students, but also uh, lecturers as well, is uh, just sets a platform for your future yeah. self. Um, my day one was my roommate, yeah. Shubank, and um, he became you know, one of my best friends throughout university and someone, you know, Grew up in Australia, very, very protected kind of area that we're, we, we grew up yes. in and being exposed to a Shandu who's from the other side of the globe and we connected and you, you find that relationship and you find common ground with people um, so easily and that builds those relationships and I mean, I'm currently dating one of uh, one of our alumni as well and, and you know, you, you find people... Could there that, be some wedding bells? We, no, we love I mean, alumni. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is that the next question? No. Um, no. But, you know, it's, it's those type of relationships that yeah. um, you find with people that you, you have an interest in, in common with um, that this university is kind of uh, set up for us. Um, yeah. Scott Boys, you mentioned before, has been an absolute mentor to me from day one um, and actually helped me actually get this new role at Sofitel and um, to, to see him from when I first met him to now the position that he is at the moment, mm. 
it gives you a bit of excitement for where you yeah. can go as a, as a hospitality professional. So. And look, it, it goes without saying, as our next generation leaders, we are, as a school and a university, incredibly proud of all of you and your achievements. And we're so happy that you've come back today to talk to us about all things next generation lead, leadership and what you're actually doing in the industry and the difference that you're making in the industry. So thank you very much. Uh, for, for giving up your time. And I think we also um, need to thank Nicole Downs from mm -hmm. Ovalo 1888 for lending us this fabulous space to film mm -hmm. in today. Mm -hmm. And it's great because this is the first time we've actually taken the Leadership Speaker Series, as I call it, on the road uh, to film and very fitting given the conversation we've had today about next generation leadership and the fact that we are celebrating the school's 30th anniversary this year. So thank you, Doreen, Laura, um, Scott, for joining us, um, and best wishes for your continued successful careers. And thank you, audience, for joining the Blue Mountains Leadership Speaker Series live from the Ovalo 1888 Hotel in Sydney. This was a special 30th anniversary edition of the Leadership Speaker Series and we very much look forward to joining you again next time. Thank you. <laughs>